I've long believed that painting can be just as much a performing art as playing an instrument or dancing. One of the things that fascinates me is the sensuality of the, the paint, how paint moves. It's alive and you must let it follow its own course. I'd known about Norman for quite some time, but also I'd seen the video of the ballet that he did in the Netherlands Ballet, which was percussionists, artists and dancers. And I was fascinated by the idea of the dancers and the set designer being able to react to each other. And I felt to myself, well, maybe this is going to be the future of opera. But the whole idea that the thing could be created around you and that the thing could give the idea of motion, which is the hardest thing to get in the theatre, immediately appealed to me. And it's one of the reasons that the Mussorgsky seemed so perfect. Because just as the piano version seems to cry out for an orchestration, so the orchestration seems to cry out for illustration. It's quite interesting. Maybe with a different orchestration, one would end up with very different illustrations. But can't you imagine it as a future of set design? Absolutely. When uh, operas, for instance, mm. are getting more and more expensive, mm. the idea that you could make the ring happen with a paintbrush. I would I, love to I, do I it. wonder why not many more people have done I, it. It's totally natural to me. It should be a sort of m mobile, moving set yes. being exactly. created at the same time as the rest is being created, you know, in, in sound or whatever. And so it can be different each time in the yes. way that opera performances yes, are different. Yes, that's right, right. The intentions are the same, but slight variations each night. It takes, yeah. a very, it takes a very musical painter is another one of the problems. Yeah. I could imagine we could be into, we, we could be into yeah. know, ritual abuse of each other if, there, if, yes. if you right. weren't so musical. <laughs> right, right. Because, it, I mean, it, the images must enhance the music, you know, rather than go against it. And, and that, that's one of my purposes too. But that's one of the reasons also you've gone for rather abstract Absolutely, designs, isn't yes. It? So it, it needs to be expressionist sort of music. You know, Stravinsky, Janáček, Mussorgsky was one of the first, of course, of this yes. this tremendous tradition, which which provoked painting of this very splashy expressionistic sort. In the opening promenade, instead of walking through the exhibition, the pictures float past us on the screen as in a dream. The shapes become distorted like wind-blown washing on a line. I'll be painting colour into the empty shapes as they move past. The shapes are pre-painted on a roll of film and the brushstrokes are live onto glass. But you know, it's completely, basically, I mean, all the gaps between movements are com also completely up to you for what, right. for what you need. I quite, the only thing is I quite like to make uh, some type of continuation. It's nice if at the end I can excuse the wrong notes, which are about to happen. <laughs> Yes. Quite just that one sniff, yeah. which is which is the pause mark, isn't yes. it? Actually, but I also have the feeling, I mean, in the way that if I go to an art gallery, pictures come up and grab me. Yes. So that you know, one right. doesn't want to stand in front of them; they seem to pull you over That's physically. Right. right. Especially the gnome, of course. It could yes. Be, it's a bit of an eccentric, I think. But one so of my aims is to confuse that. people so that they think that Simon is actually painting the pictures with his baton. In other words, he is creating the image from the music. And on the other hand, I'm creating the music, as it were, from my image. You're not quite sure which comes first, you know, the music or the image. And that's synesthesia, of course. And I hope they'll, they'll believe that Simon is a great painter at the end of this performance. <laughs> but in a way, it's very close also yes. to the relationship mm -hmm. that a soloist and a conductor have when it works. Absolutely. Yes. You should not know which one is, uh, is in charge, yes. because it's, it's, a, it's a synthesis. Yes. It's just in another medium. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? I would like to make this quite free at the end of that. But after this.
Is, right. is there anything you need? I will. Particularly for I will snap up my light for the chicks on this. Oh, pap -pap -pap. Yep, pap -pap -pap. Well, yep. I'll give you a cue then. And, yeah. Okay. And then we'll go on right into it. You know, so yes. there's no problem there. Um, I think anything that increases our appreciation, anything that widens our view, anything that can help you to catch that wonderful moment of peripheral vision where you see something out of the corner of the eye and it's gone, which is the essence of music and is actually mm. in a way the essence of Norman's work, mm. Mm. the better it is. I think there's room, there's room for all this.